we can set up something called the construction S curve. Now remember, this should be in the construction phase time series, right? So what we can do is we can put an M next to these inputs to represent that they're monthly, yeah? The same thing with the quarterly inputs, yeah? So we don't have any more quarterly at the moment. The construction S curve, all we're going to call it is the S curve. Might capitalize that S. Going to color that and we're going to put this in. So this is going to be a input. Let's just tidy this stuff up while we're here. That's a date. Well, this is, this is a calc actually. And this is a percentage. And down here is a calc and date as well. Okay, so let's flip back to our PowerPoint. Now I'm just going to get the other PowerPoint up on a different screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the first row. So you can't see what I'm doing, but I'll just highlight it on here for you. I'm just going to copy this row. Oops, sorry about that. Yep, so you get the idea here. And I'm going to paste it. So I'm just going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it where it says... I think it was... What was it? Jan 12. Okay. So Jan 2012 is when we start construction. Okay, here I'm going to paste those values, yeah? Okay, so they come out a bit funny because we're pasting from a PowerPoint. We can easily just adjust that by using the Format Painter. So what you can do is you can go Alt, H, FP if you want, and then obviously go and paint those. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste the format using a paste special. And so we've got up to December 2012. Let's do exactly the same with the next row. So this should take us out to December 2014. So control V to paste it and we can copy and Alt H and then V for paste and we can paste the formats so let's just look for formats so numbers and formatting no we just want the format okay formatting R if we we're using 2003 Excel it's a bit different but let's go R for format now what we should see and we're going to check this so I'm just going to change that column width and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sum these up so sum and for these ones I'm going to go all the way up until the end and then I'm going to make it a percentage so we should be getting a hundred percent there now I'm going to fill in some zeros up until the point in time so put a zero in the first one then what you can do is you can go control shift and then arrow right let's demonstrate it let's go control shift arrow right and then take your finger off the control key and shift arrow left and then control R. That might be a bit to take in at the moment, but once you get used to it, it's pretty quick and easy to do. And I'm going to make those percentages as well. And now I'm going to copy. I'm going to go up to this line. What I'm going to do is control arrow across to jump to the end of this row. And I know it's in row nine. So what I can do is control shift arrow back and then take my finger off the control key and keep it on the shift key and then arrow right and then paste control V okay so now these are all inputs so we should color them in blue so that's the S curve let's quickly name it so shift spacebar control left 3 alt N and enter and that should be named now 
capex are going to be equal to expenses plus our maintenance capex. So I'm going to push F3, mate, and there's our maintenance capex, okay? So this should come out to the same number. So let's go equals sum. Sum those. And let's see if the number up the very top, maintenance capex plus expenses is 708 million, okay, and 708 million. So that's all right. So we know now that our creditors balance is simply going to be equal to, and let's go to where a number is equal to negative that multiplied by, so let's go back to our assumptions, our credited a days divided by our days up here, okay? And I'm just going to push F4, F4 to lock those cells. So what are we saying here? We're saying, okay, we've got a quarterly model. Our creditor days are going to be 30 days, so that's nearly a month every quarter. So we basically take one third of that cash flow that we're not going to receive, okay? So that means at the end of the month, our creditor balance is going to be about one third. All right, so that's how we do the calculation. And now we can go our creditor movements are equal to that minus that. So what does that mean? It means that the sum, so our expenses actually paid during that period are going to be the sum of our expenses accrued and our movements in creditors, okay? So logically speaking, right, if we've got a creditor balance of 933 at the end of the period and we've got these expenses accrued of 2700 that means we've only paid 1866 right okay okay copy all these down tidy up the formatting a bit and now we can start linking okay so let's just freeze the panes. So we want to freeze the panes here. So let's go Alt W F F for freeze panes. And now we can always see those first four rows. So let's go equals and our ops. So we've got toll revenue. So let's go shift spacebar plus non toll revenue. Enter. Our expenses, so let's go control page up a few times and go to EXP and let's just roll those out. Let's see what's happening. It should only be after construction, which it is. So remember, we end construction here and then we start getting our revenues and incurring our expenses. So our EBITDA is going to be simply the sum of those two. Okay, and let's go shift up, up, control, shift, arrow across, shift, arrow left, and control, R to copy those across. Now we can grab our depreciation. So let's go and put a name on our depreciation, which we haven't done yet. So let's go dep and amort. Okay, and we're going to go shift spacebar. Control F3, Alt N, Enter. We're going to go Shift Spacebar, Control F3, Alt N, Enter. And we're going to go Equals Dep. And we're going to go Equals Amort. And Control Shift Arrow across, and Shift Arrow left, and Control R. Okay, so let's just check those values, 1360 and 33. Okay, that seems to be working fine. So our EBIT is going to be our EBITDA less depreciation and amortization. So we can just sum the 
three rows above. And copy that one across, so control shift arrow across, shift arrow left and control R. Okay, our financing expenses. Okay, so our financing expenses are going to be our accruals. Now our accruals are going to be the same as the amount paid for these ones. This one, and it's going to be different for this one. Okay, so we're just going to sum those three up, and we're also probably going to put in expenses from the construction period because we haven't capitalized those expenses. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the op stuff. So let's go to finance, let's go T1 and then plus, so T1 interest plus shift space bar agency fees plus T2 accrual. Let's copy that across and now we've got numbers for the post construction period. Now we need to grab the financing costs during the construction period. Okay. So remember, this is capitalized, so the arrangement fee is capitalized. The arrangement fee there is capitalized. And the interest commitment fees on the tranche one and tranche two. And the subdebt interest is expensed. And we need to add in here as well. So if we go back to finance or accounts and go plus finance, then we need to add in our subdebt interest there, okay? 